Well, the United States has expressed deep concern over Afghan President Hamid Karzai's recent remarks on foreign involvement in vote rigging in Afghanistan's elections last year. State Department spokesman F. Philip J. Crowley says Karzai's comments are preposterous. Also earlier today, the U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan, Carl Eikenberry, met with Karzai to receive more explanations on the president's statements. However, American officials say the war-torn country's president has spoken with U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, saying he is surprised at the consequent uproar. Clinton has also encouraged Karzai to move forward instead of living in the past. Well, for more on this, we're being joined by the president of the Bill of Rights Defense Com Committee, Chip Pitts. Um, many thanks for joining us here on Press TV. Now, this unexpected outburst by Karzai follows President Obama's visit to the country, regarding which a lot of questions remain. What do you think could have prompted Karzai to bite the hand that feeds him? Well, I think that the reasons can roughly be categorized into both the personal and the political. It's no secret that Karzai has not had the same relationship with President Obama that he had with President Bush. He had weekly video conferences with President Bush, and just last year in a leaked cable from the State Department, Karzai was said by our U.S. ambassador there to be a, uh, uh, an ineffective or dubious strategic partner. So I think that we started off the relationship with a little bit of distance because of the corruption that's been apparent and concerns about Karzai's effectiveness. But those, <clears throat> those personal concerns, which undoubtedly insulted Karzai at some level, were probably made more acute because of the visit with uh, President Obama. I understand that that meeting, the 25-minute meeting that Obama had at the beginning of this week, um, did not go that well from Karzai's perspective. I think that there was a bit of a dressing down, insisting that he come to terms with corruption and so forth. But the upshot is that that probably uh, offended Karzai personally. And when President Obama came back and again said things like, progress is too slow, that can't have helped the relationship. And in addition to that, the personal reasons, I think that there are some domestic and international political factors here. There's undoubtedly a desire on Karzai's part to be perceived as more Afghan than any Afghani uh, if he's trying to further negotiations even with the insurgent groups, the Taliban components like the, um, the Taliban leaders themselves that he met with in Saudi Arabia or his government met with, and the um, Hekmatyar group, which he met with just last month personally with representatives of that insurgent group. So he's probably walking a fine line here trying to be perceived as very sensitive against foreign influence, but also trying to uh, further his political goals. And on top of that, you have the personal gloss. Now, as you mentioned, this does reflect on a lack of trust brewing between Karzai and the U.S. And while in some regards, the U.N. as well, even his own parliament has questioned his authority. Now, how do you see this impacting the security situation in the country as Operation Mushtarak is underway? Well, it's a horrendous impact. I mean, that's the downside. Something that wasn't as well publicized was that in the same speech where he said that the fraud of the election was due not to domestic Afghans but to foreigners, Karzai actually very, very frighteningly said uh, from the U.S. perspective that this is a thin curtain between invaders or inv invasion and cooperative assistance. In other words, he was basically saying that the U.S. is like invaders. Well, that's a, a sanction for... Um, you know, even stepped up action, just as we're about to start the Kandahar offensive in the summer. Um, with four or three or four German troops dying today, and the entire German nation, or the majority of the German people uh, in that NATO, NATO ally against the uh, engagement with Afghanistan, this is obviously potentially very threatening to the security relationship. And that's why there's this diplomatic fever right now to try to rectify and correct the situation and get the relationship on a more sound footing. Well, some diplomats are saying that this was Karzai's negotiating tactic to influence talks regarding parliamentary elections. If it is so indeed, is that a viable tactic in your opinion that may work? I don't think it will work. I think that is an important uh, aspect of the domestic political situation. Karzai was trying to appear to be you know, very strong against the foreigners in order to build up his domestic support. 
But just um, on February 13th, he issued a decree saying that he has total control of the electoral process. The Electoral Commission of Afghanistan, which has five people on it, three have been appointed by the UN, two appointed by Karzai. He wants to appoint all of them. The parliament just the day before this speech, and which has caused such an uproar, basically re refused to accept that decree and his proposed amendments to the electoral law. And so they want to have uh, an uncorrupt electoral process, which of course the government needs. So I think the, the short answer is no, I don't think that this tactic will succeed. I think that ironically, um, you know, the West and the opponents of Karzai, both in parliament, but also the insurgents, the Taliban, the Hekmatyar group, there's a common interest in anti-corruption. So we've got the problem of a corrupt and, and questionably, uh, you know, legitimate government in Afghanistan not getting the message yet. Well, President of the Bill of Rights Defense Committee, Chip Pitts, many thanks indeed for your insight here on Press TV.